The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to the Ben Heck Show. Hmm, where's Karen? She's usually here by now. I just got back from the store and look what I got. It's a PlayStation 4 Slim. You know what's weird? It doesn't actually say Slim anywhere on the box. There's a picture of it. Well, but you have to know that this is slimmer than the original version to know that this is the Slim. Karen, video game people, they know everything. They are on this. Okay. So what we're gonna do in today's episode is tear apart the new PlayStation 4 Slim and see what's inside and also how it compares to the recently released Xbox One Slim. Well, clearly it only has one person on the front as opposed to four I don't things. think the box really matters. Okay, that's fair. Oh yeah, it's Xbox, what was it? Master Chief, Gears of War Man. That car. A car and Laura Croft. Or Lara Croft. They say Laura in the game. Okay. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Where are my dragons? Inspired designs. Oh, like I knocked some hot glue loose. Regrettable acting. I want to live in a world with Star Wars again! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Apparently, the PlayStation 4 wasn't small enough. So Sony has released the Slim PS4, which makes sense. There was a Slim PS3 that came out three years after the PS3 did, so I guess they're right on time. The price is reduced, but the only way to get it is with the Uncharted 4 bundle, so the price actually isn't reduced. Maybe that's too political to say, but it's true. Every treasure has its price, does it? I mean, I don't want to go into spoiler warnings for Uncharted 4, but I'm not sure if the treasure really had a price. I mean, it seemed they're pretty reasonable, actually. They just rented a few cars and boats, and boom, the balloons. I think, you know, Uncharted 2 at the end almost made me cry. It's like, you cannot come back from that. It's like, well, okay, you're done, give up now. Well, it's a box in a box. Inside the box, we have the generic ham and cheese Sam's Club box. Why don't they just go with this? Hello, Sony. There's only so many trees in the world. Hashtag check your rainforest. Don't you hate it when you get video games and there's like a paper sleeve over the plastic sleeve because they want to have a cool foil color. It's like, stop wasting my time. Oh, this is a lot thinner. Oh, what else do we get? A game, a book, a uh, instruction manual I won't read. I assume there's probably a controller in here. Yes. Remember when they didn't give you HDMI cables with consoles? Those were dark times. Oh, wow, crappy headphones. Oh my gosh, this probably costs like 50 cents. Hi, yeah, I got the new PlayStation 4 Slim. Yeah, it, it takes up less space on my shelf, it's awesome. Yeah, I can pile more pizza boxes and Doritos on top of it, it's really convenient. Okay, bye. All right, here is the Slim. Oh, I guess that raises the question, where's the hard drive? Let's take a look at the back of this thing. Okay, AC in, as usual. This is the PlayStation camera port, which they probably want you to use with the PlayStation VR. HDMI, gigabit ethernet, and oh, no Toslink port. So they got rid of the optical audio port, probably because it costs money and not many people probably use it. I actually use it, my PC at home is hooked up to a stereo and I use the optical port for that. So <laughs> look at the feet. They're the uh, PlayStation uh, characters, see? And then they've even got this screw here with the characters on it. So they're, they're like really proud of those characters. I'm assuming this screw is what holds the hard drive in place. That's kind of a small screw head for something that would, uh, you know, it's supposed to be user removable. As yet, I have not voided my warranty. Oh, look at this, it looks like something from a tape deck. It looks like, see, it looks like eight track tape. So the reason they called it eight track was because there were actually four tracks, but they were in stereo, giving you a total of eight tracks. Chobirin. Well, let's see if they changed hard drive manufacturers. The original Xbox One. These names are so confusing. And the PlayStation 4 had the exact same drive in it, a 500 gigabyte Samsung drive. Hopefully this is not like an IBM Def Star. There's a brand of hard drive back in the day that was really unreliable. It was the IBM Desk Star, but IT people called them the Def Star. Oh, it's a Toshiba spinner. Oh, it's the same size, 500 gigabytes. I think you, can you still replace the hard drives on these consoles? I think you can. Like it's easier on the PlayStation. Just don't install Linux. 
Sorry, I know. Sore subject for some people. There's actually a class action lawsuit about that. It's weird. Some of these are rubberized and some aren't. Like this one's rubberized, this one, and this one, but not this one or this one. Also, there don't appear to be any screws under them. We could make a slim portable prototype out of this. Oh, look what I found. Warranty void if seal is removed. Oh, that's always a win. Well, look at what we have here. This is like in God of War where you find the key that will crush the temple. I will crush the temple of the gods. And Kratos removed the sticker to reveal the key that would crush the gods. Oh, wait, wait, I'm, I'm a god. Oh, crap, he's coming for me. Linda Hunt, I will murder you. Hey, uh, de -de 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 -de. <laughs> God of War was so cool. I don't know about this new one though. I don't know if I like it. I guess he ran out of Greek gods to kill, so he has to find some new gods to kill. <laughs> Look at all this ribbon cable. This is insanity. I really didn't expect this. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that one. Look at that. That one's not even fully inserted. Come on, Sony. Oops. Didn't survive the boat ride over from China. All right, let's see what we got here. So this is gonna be your Wi-Fi module because it's outside of the RF cage. This is gonna be your Blu-ray drive. It seems quite small. Got your speaker and your buttons here. So I think we can probably remove that first. Now see if you're gonna to try to make some sort of like portable version of this. I mean, right off the bat, it looks more complicated than the Xbox. Because the Xbox just has a Blu-ray drive with a power cable and a SATA cable. You know, it's completely obvious what everything does. This is, uh, looks kind of proprietary, which is what Sony likes to do. Sony would probably use proprietary electricity if they could. I think you must get your house wired for uh, Edison DC before this will work. Okay, so this is gonna be your power eject buttons and your system beeper. Look at this, there's like, Multiple wires going to the Blu-ray drive. So if I'm, I'm just gonna guess, this is probably gonna be your data connection to the Blu-ray drive, motor controller, and this, don't know. Oh yeah, look at, they got the wireless antenna splayed out here. See how they have it separated? Sony's been doing it like that since the PlayStation 3. I've heard this unit is uh, quieter than the PlayStation 3, which actually can get kind of loud when you're cooking on a game. The fans kick on, it's like It's exactly the sound it makes. I am a big fan of Sony's, uh, mechanical design engineering on these consoles. Uh, especially starting with the PlayStation 3, it's uh, very neat and clean and impressively done. I think I'm gonna try to remove the Blu-ray drive first. It is very odd that uh, Sony does not have a ultra 4K Blu-ray drive in either this or the PlayStation Pro, especially considering the um, fairly cheap Xbox One S has a 4K Blu-ray in it. I mean, I would say that, yeah, I think physical media is just about done, but I mean, why not? You know, why not put it in? I guess because it would cost more money. <laughs> Looks like this is being, how I might have to remove more of the motherboard before I can get at this. You know what? I better have to pry the top off of this to get at the gooey innards. Eh, we could cook up that possum and eat it for a great price. The Warp 7 is a tiny development platform that's ideal for developing wearable technology and Internet of Things products. Use the Warp 7 to build wearables such as activity trackers, smart watches, or smart clothing. You can even use it to build innovative IoT products for smart home, city, or industrial applications. Purchase the Warp 7 development platform on element14.com today. Well, this is very uh, stark. I'm guessing this is probably gonna be the CPU here. Let's start in the back. What is this? Is it some sort of RF shield or something? I wonder what's under it. I'm guessing it's for radio frequency interference. Wow, that is really bizarre. Never seen that in a console before. You usually don't see that kind of behavior in a major appliance. Oh wow, this whole rear thing is the uh, power supply. Okay, it feels like there's a plug and probably, yeah. Okay, oh yeah, see the plug there? The main power plug. Oh, oh okay, this goes like this. Come on, it's a duck blur. There we go. Well, this looks to be the power brick. Oh, okay, it's shielded here, wasn't shielded here. There must have been some sort of a mission coming out of the top of this and they had to put that on. So yeah, let's take a closer look at this power supply before we continue with the rest of the unit. It's got two different voltages. 4.8 volts at 1.5 amps, which is probably the idle state. 12 volts at 13 amps. What is a duck blur? Let us know 
in the comments below. This plastic feels a little flimsy, which is probably why it had that additional RF shielding on it. Um, this is the power supply from the Xbox One S. It's uh, fatter, but it's a lot smaller than this one is. There are also some really weird, look at these big long capacitors, look at that. So yeah, they put a lot of work into this to make this as flat as possible. Um, I don't know, I don't wanna break it. Could be uh, sonically welded, that's where they, uh, that's a method they use to attach plastic to itself. And the welding's appropriate because it's basically permanently attached. I mean, you can separate it, but it might break. I really do try not to break these things when I take them apart. It's always like, oh, well, I, you know, maybe I could put it back together. Although I guess we could make a portable version of this too. Ah, what the heck. <clears throat> oh, okay, it was just tabbed. See, uh, you know, my extreme strength, I don't wanna like smash it like Hercules. Look at those caps. Look at everything, it's all flat, and that's really interesting. That's some interesting design. Well, that's quite the custom uh, Blu-ray drive. It's actually pretty cool. I mean, see how they've tapered it to take as little space as possible. Good gravy, look at this reduced heat sink. Wow, there's hardly anything to that. All right, so it looks like this is um, gonna be bringing air in from the top and then blowing it through this heat sink and then through the power supply, which is the same thing the PlayStation uh, 3 and 4 did. Yeah, see this mechanism they have? This is when you have a you know a slot loading tray and the disc is gonna go right here. That's a win. I guess uh, the Xbox One S has a uh, slot loading disc now. Kind of looks like someone like doing like a dance. Look at this, this is like built into the chassis I guess that's how you save money. This is a really aggressive price uh, reduction on the console, definitely. Because I mean, even if you look at like the PlayStation 3 or 4, you know, the Blu-ray drive was its own module, but this is really tied into the system. It really ties the room together. Oh! Well, it looks like they're heat sinking the RAM to this. Well, that board is pretty small, look at that. And then also we have a heat pad on these guys, which look like, oh, they're probably some sort of rectifier. Let's dig deeper and see what we can find. Wow, this is a lot more <laughs> intense than the Xbox One S. You think this is a game, Bugs? Well, guess what? You just lost. I'll kill you, Bugs, just like I killed Rooney Mara, oh, Kate Mara. Look, I can't keep the Mara sisters straight. I wonder why they heat sink the RAM. I think the RAM on this runs at a higher frequency than the Xbox One. Maybe that's why they have to heat sink it. Man, this plastic case is like really integrated. I mean, this is good system design. It's just too good. <laughs> I guess I could try removing the CPU clamp. Yes, the clamps. That's interesting. Huh, it's a metal plate there. What is holding this board in place? I go, I guess nothing now. Okay, here's the main motherboard. It's actually quite small. It's only about 55% of the unit. Let's take a look at the parts. This is going to be your power regulation here because it was heat sunk. Then you have your big APU, which looks almost identical to the one inside of the Xbox One S. We can compare them later on, actually. Down here we have, this is a Sega branded chip, so I'm guessing this is probably their custom video encoder that they have, which allows the system to easily capture video for streaming. Uh, yeah, so we have the camera hookup here. This is probably also acts as the North Bridge or the South Bridge. Uh, then we have the, some sort of video encoder, and this goes to the ethernet, and you got your hard drive here, and here's your power power input. Oh yeah, looks like you got some power regulation going on here as well. Then we have these weird standoff uh, USB ports. See how they stick up like that? That's kind of funny. Well, I think we should clean up the paste off this APU and see how similar it is to the Xbox One S. Let's take a look at how the PlayStation 4 Slim compares to the Xbox One S. Well, the motherboards are astronomically different in size. Look at that. That's pretty insane. The PlayStation has uh, heat sinks on the RAM, whereas the Xbox doesn't. Because if you look at the Xbox, it has more RAM chips, which means each chip is smaller. Plus, the PlayStation runs the RAM at a higher frequency. Take a look at the APUs, the accelerated processing units. Remember, both of these systems are basically made by AMD. The main difference is the Xbox One uses more of the die space for some on-die RAM, whereas the PlayStation 4 uses more die space for video cores. But otherwise, they're pretty identical. See, this is obviously they have these dots here. See, there's two different dots. This is so the factory is like, oh, two dots. That means it's a PlayStation. One dot, it means it's an Xbox One. Okay, that's not really probably <laughs> why. Uh, it just goes to show, you know, how close the consoles are now. One thing I did know that's dis different is um, you do have two separate voltages on your PlayStation 4 power supply. You've got, uh, what was it, 4.5 volts, which is probably like the uh, idle state rail. And then you have 12 volts, whereas the Xbox is pretty simple. You just put 12 volts into it and it just works. Well, something else we could look at to compare them. 
The heat sinks. This is the Xbox One S heat sink, which is still greatly reduced from the original Xbox One. Compare that to what's on the PlayStation 4 Slim. Look at that. Can you spot the difference? <laughs> I mean, this one has heat pipes, a steel base. This one is basically just a steel base and some fins. Oh, and I found the last screw to pull out the Blu-ray drive. Blu-ray drive is kind of like excessively big if you think about it, it's, it's thick. I like the Blu-ray drive in the Xbox a lot better than this one. An overview of the parts we found inside of the PlayStation 4 Slim. Got the main board itself, it's quite small. Has a lot of heat sinked parts on it. Pretty efficient design. The hard drive, which uh, it's a different brand than the previous PlayStation 4, fits in like that. Power supply was back here on top of it, like this. And this uh, <laughs> Blu-ray drive, which was made as small as possible. Look at that, fits right there. And then we had a heat sink on top of the APU, just like that. And the heat sink is very small. So yeah, this is a very small, compact unit. I guess it runs cooler and uses less energy than the previous PlayStation 4. That's a good thing. Could we make this into some sort of portable laptop device? Now that is a good question for another time. That's all the time we have for today. So we've already gotten ideas for this to turn it into a laptop or a tablet or a very large handheld. I bet someone out there has a better idea for what we could do with this. So share your ideas on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. You can also go there to read about other upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. So go on the Element 14 and give us your ideas at element14.com forward slash TBHS. Go on the Element 14. I just, <laughs> <laughs> shut up. I realized what I said because I said it weird this time. Ooh, silicon, you're looking you, sexy. You know today. what? <laughs> the Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.